Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, I know it happened a couple of days ago, but I got some great questions yesterday about the large squall line that started off in Iowa, pressed through Illinois, over into Indiana, and down into Kentucky and Tennessee. And it was quite long. You can see it stretched from Chicago clear to St. Louis. And the questions I got was more about the structure of this particular storm system. So I went back and dug through some of the college notes from the courses I used to teach. And I want to show you something neat about this. I'm going to do a cross-sectional view. So in other words, if I were to draw a line just like this and show you what it looked like in the vertical, well, you get the thunderstorm that you see up here on the top of your slide. And I've outlined here for you the cloud field. And what I want to point out is a few of the important features. Now, on the leading edge of these uh, types of storm systems, you see this really fine line on radar, that line right in through there. Well, that is actually where the radar is scanning through the shelf cloud of the thunderstorm. That's the main outflow of the thunderstorm right in through here. I'll show you a picture of that in just a few seconds. This particular shelf cloud was quite interesting because sitting on top of it were several layers of more statically stable air that were lifted, giving this shelf cloud a, what we call a stack of pancakes type look. Now behind the main uh, shelf cloud as it comes through, this is where we have most of our heavy rainfall. The primary downdraft sits right in through here. That's where all the heavy rain is found. But then and many of us got to enjoy the back side of this where we have what we call the trailing stratiform region. Now that trailing stratiform region is where we got that nice rain for a couple of hours after the main nasty part of the storm went through. And what makes these storms quite nasty is this feature in the back called a rear inflow jet. And that rear inflow jet was quite powerful and did produce some damaging winds. I'll show it to you in a few moments. But take a look at this picture uh, by my colleague Matt Reardon who works for us at Nutrient Ag Solutions. And what I got a great picture of here is the main shelf cloud sitting here, but all the striations, that stack of pancakes look out ahead of it. Fantastic picture you grabbed here, Matt. I also want to show you this. Remember that rear inflow jet causes a lot of damage. Well, we had nearly 400 reports of severe weather uh, in the day on the 20th. And you can see that a lot of them coming from that squall line that moved through parts of Iowa, Illinois, over into parts of uh, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. And this was just a picture of some of the damage we saw up near Galesburg with some of the Andros here blown down. So I just want to do a quick recap of that storm system because it was quite impressive and to be honest, pretty well forecast. Well, what have we seen over the last 24 hours? Well, this is our infrared satellite image and it's telling us a pretty good story about what is to come. First of all, let's start in the tropics. We do see our pulse of tropical moisture. See it there? This is coming out of the Bay of Campeche. I've been talking about it now for about a week that will be interacting down here along the Gulf Coast. Secondly, we do need to be paying attention to the tropical convection that's happening just to the, you know, over the Bahamas, uh, kind of east of Cuba uh, and Florida and what that's going to be doing over the coming days. Thirdly, I don't like what I'll be seeing right in through this corridor. This is a region that has seen a lot of rain recently. You saw it again yesterday. We have flash flood warnings and watches out for that area and more rain is on the way. Uh, here along the, the mountains, storms just blew up again. They're just beautiful to watch flowing off the mountains. But the bigger player for a lot of us is going to be this shortwave trough that is snuck in here into the Pacific Northwest, bringing in widely scattered showers and storms and the deeper front that's pushing in here that we'll be interacting with. So we got a lot to be watching here. But before I go any further, let me at least show you what we got over the last 72 hours in terms of total accumulated precipitation. That satellite animation kind of highlights the main areas that we saw. So stretching it back just over the last three days, the squall line gave us this. Widely scattered showers and storms here. First tropical pulse came in down here and hit the Gulf Coast pretty hard. Some severe weather here along the parts of the East Coast, specifically in the Appalachian Mountains there uh, in parts of um, North and South Carolina. And here's our next system that came in bringing in some rainfall that's uh, honestly this time of year quite rare in parts of Oregon and um, in Washington. So with that as the setup, let's take a look at where we're going. Early in the morning, I imagine a lot of you were not getting much sleep in parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and southwestern Missouri, nor uh, were you in there in parts of Kentucky and Indiana where the thunderstorms were still rolling through. These storms are sitting here on a boundary that will be kind of stuck in this area and kind of work its way back up the high plains uh, over the coming days here. And that'll be the main focal point for more of our flooding uh, potential right in through here. Now, I'll be honest, going back to the beginning of August, this particular area has just been hammered with rainfall, parts of uh, Missouri and, and this part of Kansas, and I've got bad news because a lot more is on the way. Just getting you through next Monday morning, you can see that this area is going to be a focal point for a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity. The shortwave that moves through the Pacific Northwest, well, that did move through the Pacific Northwest yesterday and last night, will then be 
it's basically turning into a pretty powerful low pressure system that moves through the Canadian prairies. So I'm going to be watching for the severe weather threat here on the high plains with some heavier rains as we finish up this week and get into the weekend. You can see one tropical impulse coming in here, the second one coming over here. But this particular area going to be honestly rather clear and, and relatively dry as not only some drier air moves in behind a, a front but some cooler air moves in. Finally we don't see in much of our tropical moisture coming up here on our monsoon which has been quite lacking in the desert southwest this year. So let me show you the upper level flow that's going to be creating all of this. First of all this is the trough that's bringing in some cooler air and setting us up with that boundary here. This is the trough that's sweeping through that's going to be moving into the Canadian prairies that's going to set up our next big weather system. And the ridge that you see here, well, this is allowing for some of the moisture return out ahead of this next system. You can maybe see a little bit better if I step you down in the atmosphere. Take a look. We can just start from the tropics and work our way up. First impulse is pushed this way. Second one just like this. There's a cold front, a boundary sitting right in through here, uh, all wrapped around this upper level trough that's spinning here in parts of Quebec. But moisture return, instability return, coming back up the high plains out ahead of this next feature that's coming out of the Intermountain West, and that's going to be a major focal point for us. Okay, so really well defined here, I think, in the flow of the atmosphere. Put it to you one last way before I show you this forecast. This is looking at precipitable water through Friday evening, and what do we see? Look at the drier air that is behind that front, but it will be along this front that we have our continual source of showers and thunderstorms right in through here, specifically getting back over to parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas. Secondly, out ahead of that next system, we can see that the atmosphere will not only be destabilizing, but be quite juicy here uh, in parts of the uh, north central plains and the high plains. And again, we can see the moisture associated with our two tropical impulses here moving uh, throughout the next couple of days. Uh, in terms of severe weather threat, most of it's going to be along that boundary that stretches here and then comes back up the high plains today. Uh, once we get into the day on Friday, again, it's going to be parts of the Carolinas and Virginia, and then we're watching that same boundary. And then finally, once this upper level shortwave on Saturday starts to move out into the Canadian prairies, we're just going to be watching again North and South Dakota as our main focal point. But what you do notice here is that Storm Prediction Center's got the highest risk as marginal. Doesn't mean we can't still get some nasty storms, but at least it's not uh, incredibly high. So let's now get into it. Short range forecast. Let's just go ahead and click play on this. Starting off at 6 a.m. Uh, here on Thursday and playing us out through the middle of the day on Saturday. And if you just notice this corridor in through here and then coming back up the high plains, that's our area that we're continuing to see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity over the coming days. So, yep, that includes everywhere from, uh, you know, parts of Virginia, North Carolina, back into Tennessee, Kentucky, stretching right over here into parts uh, of Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. But we'll watch the timing of some of those storms right here as we get up into the high plains. Notice we get these storms coming through on Friday. That's the first pulse. This is, I'm sorry, excuse me, early Friday morning. And then second pulse there really on Saturday, excuse me, Friday night into early Saturday morning. So we have certainly a, a well-established boundary on which storms are going to fire. And we're just going to have to watch the radar very closely right in through this area to see how much rain we do get from the next uh, over the next 60 hours or so. If we take this over to the uh, uh, European model, you can see it even better, I think. Uh, if you just notice, let me just play you through here. Look, it's right there. It's just so well established along that boundary and then feeding up here into the northern plains by the time we get into the weekend. You can just see the influence of the higher atmospheric pressure. In fact, I don't have to remove the drawings. The big high sitting right in through here, all along its periphery, plenty of moisture. Tropical impulse coming up here for the start of our weekend. Boy, it's just going to be wash, rinse, repeat over the next couple of days. And unfortunately, that means the flood threat stays relatively high, like I said, right in through this quarter and through here. Okay, beyond that, what about Monday? Well, once we start to get into our new week, what I'll be watching is two things. There's a low pressure system that's emerging on a short wave coming out of Colorado, and then the deeper wave up here moving through parts of Manitoba, then getting over into parts of Ontario. Now watch what they do together. This is Monday afternoon, Monday evening, getting into Tuesday morning. The shortwave that moves through here hits Missouri again, eastern Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas again. The, tr uh, the trough that's sitting here in the north central part of uh, you know, Canada, right in through here, its front drapes through here, giving a chance for storms that moves through parts of, initially through parts of uh, Iowa, 
um, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, but then stretches here over into Michigan, down into the Ohio River Valley. And that one comes through and does the same thing, clears everything out right about the time we're starting the Farm Progress Show. So current forecast for Farm Progress Show right here in Decatur is high pressure should be moving in by Wednesday morning. And you can see that we're going to spend Wednesday and Thursday relatively dry next week as the dominant feature is this deep upper level low sitting here over parts of the Hudson Bay. So that's kind of our forecast getting us out to, to Friday of next week. Uh, putting it all together, this is what the European model is picking up on. And surprisingly, the GFS is in pretty darn good agreement. So Euro, GFS. You can see both of them putting down the heavy rains in basically the same places over the next 10 days. Uh, outside of that, just to take a quick check on the tropics, you can see the first system we were talking about right in through here, bringing in some heavy rain, not going to get named, not anything to worry about. The second system here, you saw that running up the east coast of the United States, and we are starting to see uh, more convective activity rolling off of the west coast of Africa. So this is an area that we climatologically are starting to push toward the peak of, all right? In terms of what we're watching, we do have another named system, Chantel, out here. Don't worry about it. It's for the fishes, not doing much. Uh, the other one is just there's a slight chance that this one could develop into a tropical depression over the next few days. But again, just hugging the coast there. Uh, wrapping all that up, this precipitation discussion, you can see by this map, this is the next 15 days from the European model, who's wet and who is dry compared to climatological average. And it's a nice summary of the forecast we put together so far. Now, our temperature discussion has not changed since yesterday's long range forecast video. And just to show you an animation here of the upper level flow pattern, it's pretty clear that we're going to be seeing troughing in the central Canadian prairies, moving over to the Great Lakes states and up into the Hudson Bay with time, with building heights out here on either side of North America. And so that's allowing for some colder air that's been kind of stacked up in this area. Please go watch yesterday's long range outlook to see where that cold air is really established. And because of that, no change. Look at this. Over the next five days, where's the heat? It is down here in the south and southwest and building over toward California. One shortwave trough comes in, keeping things cool, then digs here over the coming days, knocking temperatures back a few degrees below average. Looking out to day five through ten, same thing. That upper level trough finally digs deeper and then gets established over here uh, between the Great Lakes and Hudson Bay. And there's your cooler weather with the heat spreading west again. And finally, taking you all the way out to days 10 through 15, I've got great agreement on the on the right, the GFS, on the left, a European. You can see the pattern we've been talking about for a while now. This has been pretty well forecast by our global models. I've been quite impressed. So let's transition there and just take a quick look at elsewhere around the globe. Got to take you to South America. All that haze that you see there, that's actually a lot of smoke from the fires. There will be a lot of active burning here on the northern edge of like Mato Grosso, uh, where we are, you know, actively, uh, you know, cutting into the, um, you know, into the Brazilian rainforest here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, geopolitical problems with this right now. If you may have heard some of this on the news media, but the truth of the fact is that. You know, the truth of the matter is that when I look back over the last decade, we've basically seen a slope in the increase of acreage to the tune of about 600,000 hectares per year. And where a lot of that land's coming from is right here on the edge of the Amazon. So it's going to be a quite smoky view of what's going on uh, in South America in the coming days, weeks, and months. Now, I'll tell you what a lot of folks in South America are keeping a close eye on. They're keeping a close eye on a few things, but one of them is the development here of some cooler water temperatures that are just off the west coast of Peru. And uh, that particular area and through there, they're going to watch to see what the wind field responds to that in terms of El Nino strength or the development of a La Nina and what that means to, uh, for South American precipitation. They're also keeping a close eye on the cooler waters that are in the South Atlantic right now as well. So we'll get more into South America as we progress toward their planting season, but I want to least give you some preliminary updates there. Elsewhere, I got to take you over to China. So what's been interesting is that the last few model runs have really dried out the uh, farmland that is south of Beijing here. This is the next 10 days, not seeing much at all in terms of precipitation. And even though when you look at the whole of where we produce a lot of corn and soybeans and whatnot in China, and the northern grow regions have kept quite wet, but those southern grow regions right here after that typhoon hit about 15 days ago uh, is very, very dry. And uh, it's important to kind of see that drying pattern in that area. 
the, even the next tropical system that's coming out, you can see it right in through here, is forecast to kind of miss that same region. So that's important to see here. Uh, elsewhere, the Indian monsoon is cranked and it's going just as we would expect uh, for this time of year. Finally, I'll finish up with a bit on Europe. We do see that over the next week or so, warmer than average conditions occupying much of Europe as the storm track really heads north like this. And we also see relatively drier conditions except for in the Mediterranean pushing into Italy, which has actually seen a lot of severe weather this year. So that is your international update here as I finish up this forecast video. Hope you all have a great end to your week and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.